Building a quadcopter is a very rewarding experience, and achieving your first flight is an accomplishment you should be proud of. After a few days or weeks of building, by getting your quadcopter up in the air, you've accomplished what birds need millions of years of evolution to achieve, the ability to fly. But what if you want to take your flying adventures one step further? How about controlling a camera gimbal or dropping off a package? To do so, you'll need to control some additional motors and this tutorial will show you the connections that need to be made using the Pixar 4 flight controller. Hey everyone, today I'm going to go through a very simple demonstration on how to control a servo motor for your quadcopter using the Pixar 4 flight controller. If you have not yet heard of the Pixar 4 or you're interested in building your very own quadcopter, then check out the playlist linked in the video card above where I go through the entire quadcopter build process. Now to get started in controlling a servo with the Pixar 4, you'll need a working quadcopter, a servo motor, your companion transmitter, and the Q-Ground Control application. All parts and videos I'll be referencing are provided below in the video description. To get started, let's first take a look at the Pixar 4's wiring diagram to understand which connections need to be made. If you have built your quadcopter or referenced my build videos, this diagram may already look familiar to you. When assembling a quadcopter using this power management board, the four ESC control wires are soldered to the pads labeled M1 through M4, shown in pink. Now to control a servo motor, we'll need to use the top group of pins labeled FMU PWM out. These FMU PWM out pins are where we will eventually connect the servo. However, only a few of these are actually available to us as this depends on the airframe we are using. To figure out which pins are available to us, let's check out the airframe reference documentation. The vehicle setup that I'll be using is the S500 quadcopter, which falls under the quad rotor X airframe category. If you're using a different airframe, don't worry. All of these steps generalize to other airframes. Under the generic quadcopter, we see that the specific outputs of this airframe are main 1 through main 4, corresponding to motor 1 through motor 4. These parameters are parallel to the pink M1 through M4 from the wiring diagram. In addition, the common outputs of this airframe are AUX1 through AUX3, which feed through from auxiliary RC channels. We'll be needing these three parameters for later, so keep them in mind. Heading back to the wiring diagram and scrolling down to this connection table, we see that because the quad rotor X airframe designated main as a motor, the IO PWM cable is used to pass the ESC PWM commands from the Pixar 4 to the power management board. By process of elimination, servo motors for the quad rotor X airframe will use AUX parameters and FMU PWM cable. This is exactly what we need to send PWM commands to our servo motors. That was a lot of information taken. So to summarize real quick, the Quad Rotor X airframe has four motors, which are connected to pads M1 through M4 on the power management board. The Pixar 4 sends commands to these motors using the main parameter and the IOPWM cable connection. In addition, the Quad Rotor X has three auxiliary channels, AUX1 through AUX3, and these are accessible through the AUX parameter and the FMU PWM cable connection. To locate the correct pins on the power management board to connect your servo motor, it may be helpful to remove the top plate of your airframe depending on your setup. From the wiring diagram and airframe reference, we have access to AUX1 through AUX3, which are the three rightmost pins. One important thing to note is that these pins are not internally powered. This means that the rails need to be powered using the BEC of one of your ESCs or through the battery. I soldered a servo extender wire to the BEC of my bottom left ESC so that I can easily connect it to the leftmost pin, AUX8, which is unused by this airframe. You only need to use one BEC. Now connect the Pixar 4 to the power management board by connecting the following cables. Power 1, Power 2, IO PWM out to IO PWM in, FMU PWM out to FMU PWM in, your receiver, your GPS module, and your telemetry module if you have one. After connecting a battery and attaching a servo to AUX1, you should see the servo move to its default position indicating that it's powered. If this doesn't occur, it may be that the servo is already in its default position. To test this, disconnect the servo and twist the horn to offset it from its current position. Then plug the servo back in. With the servo connected and powered on, now we need to set the appropriate channel in our transmitter. Here I've got my awesome Tyrannus X90 transmitter from FR Sky paired to my Pixar 4 using the FR Sky X8R receiver. If you have not yet created a model for your quadcopter, Check out the video card above for a quick tutorial where I go over how to do just that. Now go ahead and select your model and go to the mixes page. For me, 
This is page five. Here you can see that I have six channels already set up from my previous build video. Channels one through four correspond to my main joysticks. Channel five is my flight mode selector and channel six is my arming switch. Now let's create a new mix on channel seven. I'm going to call it servo, select stick SB as my source by first pressing enter on the source line, then toggling switch SB, then pressing exit a few times to confirm. Now onto QGround control for the final step. Open up QGround control, then power up and connect your quadcopter to your computer using the Pixar Force provided micro USB cable or a telemetry module. Go to the flight modes page so we can verify that the servo channel is set up properly. Toggle the transmitter's channel 7 stick and make sure the channel 7 value in the Q round control changes. If for some reason you don't see this, make sure you have the correct channel and switch selected in your transmitter. Next, go to the parameters page and search for RC underscore map. In red, you can see all of the parameters I currently have modified. If you've followed my build videos, you should see something similar. These channels are a one-to-one -one mapping of the channels on my transmitter. Starting with channels one through four, these map to throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. Channel five is my flight mode selector, and channel six is my arming switch. Now remember from the airframe reference documentation, there were three important parameters, aux one through aux three. We see these appear in the form of RC map aux one through RC map aux three. Since I connected my servo to the rightmost FMU PWM out pin, I'm going to be using aux one as my control command. Depending on your servo's pin location, select the appropriate RC map aux parameter and assign it to channel seven. Now go back to your quadcopter and press the GPS module's safety switch, then actuate the paired channel seven switch. And that's how you control a servo motor for your quadcopter using the Pixar 4 flight controller. In this video, I covered relevant documentation diagrams, physical connections that need to be made, how to create a new transmitter mix and important Q ground control parameters. If you want to control more than one servo at a time, you just need to plug additional servos into the AUX2 or AUX3 FMU PWM out pins, create a new transmitter channel, and configure the appropriate RC map AUX parameter. Hopefully you learned something of value from this video. Now to apply what we've learned, here's a quick teaser for my next video, which uses a servo motor set up exactly like I just covered. Enjoy. I'll be publishing that video in two weeks, so hit that subscribe button to get notified when it's released. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one. See ya.